and I won't back down. If you suffer from chronic pain, listen up. I think you guys know by now that I am a total fitness fanatic and I'm always looking for ways to improve my health. That's when I discovered a turmeric supplement called Golden Revive Plus. After taking it for just a few weeks, I started to feel relief in places that I didn't even know I had pain. This stuff is incredible for reducing pain in your knees, back, hips, elbows, hands, or feet, and I wanted to share it with as many people as possible. That's why I'm recommending it on my podcast with a special discount just for the right view listeners until August 31st. You can get 30% off your first order of Golden Revive Plus. Just head over to goldenrevive.com and use promo code TRUMP at checkout. Over 300,000 Americans just like you are already using Golden Revive Plus to get and stay pain-free. Again, head over to goldenrevive.com and use promo code TRUMP at checkout for 30% off your first order. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us right here on The Right View for a little ladies' tea. Tonight, we're excited. we got a newbie here with us, journalist Brittany uh, Hopper. Brittany, thank you so much for joining us. We're excited to have you on, as well as editor-in-chief of The Post Millennial, Libby Emmons. So, ladies, uh, we had a convention last week. I don't know if anybody saw. I don't know if anybody uh, kept their eyes open with toothpicks like I did and, like, I mean, if you wanted to really waterboard somebody or torture them in another way, you could have them sit through the entire uh, the <laughs> DNC convention, Libby. Uh, I had, I felt I had to watch it as, out of duty just to see what on earth was going on. But let me just get your top line, Libby. After we finally got through the whole thing, they, they dragged Joe Biden out at some god-awful hour. Then they got him out of there real quick. They can't have anything to do with old Joe anymore. You had, of course, the Obamas come in, and they wanted to give a little space, it sounds like, between the Obamas and Kamala Harris, because can't upstage Kamala right now. We obviously heard from Tim Walz and then Kamala herself. What was your big takeaway, uh, Libby, from the DNC? My big takeaway from the DNC is that the whole thing is fake. It's a complete put up <laughs> job. Everything, every single speech, everything that was said in every single speech was a platitude. It was rhetoric. If you tried to dig underneath it to find any meaning, there literally wasn't any. Uh, and you also had all of these Democrats waving American flags while other Democrats were out in the street burning American flags. So you get a really peculiar perception at that point of what this party stands for. And you even had members of the Black Caucus saying, um, well, they're saying we only have to be normal for another 70 days. Yeah. You know, just don't be crazy for another 70 days. It's like, okay, so you're going to be crazy after that. And you've definitely been crazy before this, you know, marching around in the street, screaming about everything, uh, trans rights in Palestine, whatever else nonsense they have going on. So yeah, my interpretation is this is a fake party. This is a fake campaign. And this, there's fake messaging going on. Yeah, very fake. I mean, I kind of described it as there. Uh, yeah, platitudes, vibes, emotions, and basically exactly. Trump hating. That was mm -hmm. sort of it. That like was the that, whole thing. Yeah, oh, yeah, I think they mentioned Donald Trump's name every night far more. I mean, dozens and dozens of times more than they mentioned the economy, than they mentioned the border, than they mentioned wars around the world. Those are things people care about. Those are things people want to know, well, what's your solution here, Brittany? Like, how are you going to make my life any better at all? My question is, you know, Kamala Harris came out and look, this is a person who you, you slap it up on the teleprompter. Kamala Harris is going to read it. Whatever it is, you tell her what direction she needs to go. She will go that direction. Much like Joe Biden, you can kind of point her wherever it is. We've heard all of the, the moments she's had in the past and the things she's thought about. Do you think, though, Brittany, I'm wondering, was her speech effective? I, I certainly could see if I if I happened to be a person who wasn't really keen on anything political, didn't pay a whole lot of attention, but I got the snippets, the highlights. You're a former, you, you know, you were on TV for a long time in a very mainstream uh, place. We know how that goes. We know that you take a snippet of sound from somebody, you slap it together in, in your piece. What do you think people took away from that speech? Do you think it moved the needle for her any? 
here are my thoughts with this. Um, first of all, the DNC was the definition of hypocrisy. The Democrat Party is the definition of hypocrisy. Kamala's speech um, and, and what she's doing in a nutshell right now, there's a reason why they have her not going in front of the press. This is I said this in the beginning on Fox News, that there is a reason for this. They are doing this on purpose. Her speech, if you were just sitting there watching it and you say, gosh, this sounds great. But then you have to remember, this is what they do. This is part of the problem. And the media just rolls with it and they put the snippets, the best parts, so that people just read the headlines and they don't realize how are, how are these policies going to actually be implemented? She is telling the American people what they want to hear, but I can assure you that it's not going to be what she does. Because they've, they, the Democrats have been in office running the White House for what, 12 years out of the 16 years? Right. Look, yeah. at, look at what a mess it's been. Look at our country. So you cannot tell me they've been in control. You can't tell me that they're, they're feeding the lies to the American people and the media, the mainstream media is on their side. And so it helps. I also have my master's degree in clinical psychology. OK, oh. so it doesn't take a it doesn't take a, a, a professional, a, a psychologist to say that if you keep regurgitating and saying one side, keep telling the American people the same thing, the American people aren't going to be brainwashed. And in a nutshell, I think the American media, the mainstream media is the biggest threat that we have right now. So I think it's BS what Kamala said. I think her speech was BS. I think even saying she's pro Israel um, and going oh. It, it, like that's a whole other issue. I mean, I I can tell you she has a stepdaughter who was raising money for Hamas, a internationally known terrorist organization. So all of this I call BS on, but I think it's I think it's really smart of the Democrats though, because th th this is all done purposefully to to brainwash the American people to think she won't be so bad, she's not so radical left. Oh, once she gets in, watch out. Just watch. Yeah. Hopefully, well, they're, she can, but they're God sort of going. They're sort of going the anyone but Trump uh, thing again, Libby. It would seem to me. And I'll tell you, I, I supposedly we're going to hear from Kamala Harris this week. They say on Kamala's team, she's going to do some big old sit down interview this week. You actually had Chris Cuomo. I'll give him credit. Uh, you guys talked about it at the Post Millennial, calling her out, saying she, that she's been hiding from the press because she's a risk to the Democrat party, suggesting that she's really not as talented as some of their previous nominees. And, and you don't even have to take Chris Cuomo's word for it. Go back and look at Kamala Harris. Go back and look at some of her interviews, Libby. Um, what's your expectation in terms of what you think will happen with Kamala Harris? Um, you know, I, I said it before, but they kind of spaced out the Obamas away from her because look, both the Obamas, whatever you think of them, they're great orators. They can deliver a speech. Man, they're good at delivering a speech. They really can pump people up. But she is not one of those people. She can read it off a teleprompter. But when she sits down one on one with a, a news reporter, even if it's a friendly outlet, Libby, um, I don't know. I don't think it's going to go great for her. Yeah, I mean, I will say this is the best speech she's ever given of her career. That's not saying much, however, yeah, since right. you rarely hear her say anything. And when she does say things, it is confusing word salad, yeah. as we could all mimic right now if we were really pressed to it. Yeah, this was a this was a campaign that is launched about not being Trump. And also the other thing is she still hasn't spoken to the press. As you've said, she hasn't held a press conference. And what they're really doing by putting off this interview, by putting off any kind of press conference, is they're making things that much harder for Kamala Harris. Right. Because the longer she waits to speak to the American people and answer questions, the longer she waits to have a town hall, perhaps, which of course Trump is now doing after Harris decided that she didn't want to debate him on Fox, uh, it's just going to be that much more difficult. They're ramping this thing up to the point where, um, you know, if they'd done it in the first place, it wouldn't be a big deal. Take five, six interviews, go for it. We'll cover them. We'll watch them. We'll get a sense of who you are and what you're about. But now we have a situation where when she sits down for this interview, it's going to be the Super Bowl and she will not be able to afford a single, you know, interception or a single, I don't know, offsides. I got out ahead of my <laughs> skis working on the on football your, interview here, but, football thing. but you know, she's not going to be able to, um, she's not going to be able to get away from her mistakes. 
And we're all going to be watching as intently as we watch this DNC to try and get any kind of sense of what she's about or what good she could possibly do for the American people. And that should be a scary place for the Kamala campaign. Yeah, I think they're they're very scared. Brittany, I think they're terrified to put her out there. It's not as though Kamala Harris in the past like 38 days or whatever it's been has had some miraculous reawakening. And she's like, oh my gosh, now I understand all this stuff. Now I know how to do this. Now I can actually dig in deep. If you actually go back and look at some of the criticisms from her own team, from people who left her, uh, the, the VP's office, they would they would kind of talk about the fact that she really didn't want to do the work. Like this is a person who they would give her the big binders before events and she would never study them. She didn't want to really take the time to do much. She would show up unprepared. And at the end of the day, what we're doing is we're actually hiring someone for a position. You as an American citizen get to vote for a person who is working for you. I, I think people often forget that the people in Washington, D.C. are not there, supposed to be there for so they're supposed to be there for us and they're supposed to do the things that we ask them to do. So if I'm actually hiring someone and I'm looking at a person who shows up a lot of times unprepared, who just wings it from now and now and again, whenever she's in front of a, a, a microphone or in front of a camera, that's not a person I want to hire to do a job. I'd rather have a person, maybe I don't love everything he says and maybe he's a little abrasive to some people, but man, we know he could do that job. And if I'm running a company that's who I'm putting in charge of it. Here's what I want to ask you, though. One of the funniest things I thought was the whole De Beyonce debacle. Right. They had they had po postured as though Beyonce was going to be there. And I think actually TMZ reported that she would be there. And then they had to go back and say, like, oops, sorry. We didn't really mean that, that, com that uh, Beyonce was going to come uh, intro Kamala. You had a huge crowd there the last night at the convention center, which everyone was talking about. Look at this crowd. You can feel the energy. What did you make of the whole Beyonce situation, Brittany? Because as far as I'm concerned, that was a head fake. They knew that if they said Beyonce might show up, they would cram a lot of people in this place. They'd get the party started, get the momentum and the energy up. And then Kamala comes out and then they can fake as though, you know, they all showed up to see her. It's like that movie Wag the Dog, if anybody ever saw that, where they like That's have to, movie. right, they have to fake a war overseas because there's some yeah. issue in an election. Same thing to me. There's a bit of a Wag the Dog situation. What did you think? So, so we know uh, TMZ is not pro-President Trump. <laughs> well aware of this, right? I mean, we can all, we all, we all can agree on that. Um, this was 1000% done on purpose to get people to even watch, not, not just there, but to just get people to watch and see that, you know, yes, exactly what you said, but going back to what Libby said, I just want to touch on that because as a former recovering mainstream media TV journalist, I'm more worried about the questions that they're going to ask Kamala, they're going to go easy on her. They're going to go on her. You know they are. And so that's that's the fear that I have moving forward. And I do think that they're prepping her. I don't think she's going to come off, off the cuff. I think that she has a lot of help right now. And they've got a team around her who are just really, really making sure that she does say all the right things. And then post-election, it's just going to blow up in all of our faces. Who that's what I worry about because again, they're telling the American people what they want to hear. We haven't heard yet how these policies will actually be implemented. It sounds great. It sounds, I mean, some of them, some of them uh, totally go against my values and morals and, but, but some of them to the average American person sounds lovely, but there it, it's, it's all smoke and mirrors. And, um, this is one big hypocrisy. I can't use that word enough when mm -hmm. describing the Democrat party. It's all a bunch of hypocrisy. Well, listen, I think, you know, you look at the whole thing, Libby, it all feels like it's been an orchestrated plan, right? For, and I'm going to go back months ago I so when somebody in the in the Democrat Party, and I'm going to guess, mm, I don't know, Nancy Pelosi, realized, oh, my God, Joe Biden cannot beat Donald Trump. Joe Biden cannot actually pursue being president again because we're going to lose. We're going to lose at the top. We're going to lose down ballot races. We're going to lose the House. Uh, we're going to lose in the Senate. We're going to lose it all if Joe Biden is at the top of the ticket. He's going to drag everybody down, and we cannot afford that. And so somebody, it would seem to me, and call me crazy, sent out the messaging to the mainstream media outlets. And that messaging went along the lines of, 
we need to start calling out Joe Biden and yeah. saying that he's cognitively unwell. 100%. And so, right. And so that's how they started it. And then they said, you know what? We see you, Donald Trump. We'll do a debate. And you know when we'll do it? We'll do it June 27th. And people were like, June 27th? Right. Why on earth would they do a June 27th debate? No one's ever done a debate that early. But they were like, no, Joe Biden can handle it. Uh-huh. Wink, wink, nod, nod. Right. Yeah, right. They knew Joe Biden was going to go in there, fall flat on his face. Then they set him up. Then they had some other. They had a press conference. I forget what it was. It was on some uh, international situation that he was there in front of all the cameras. And I, I even said, I think it was on TV that night, and I was like, this feels like a setup to me. Like they're going to just kind of twist the knife a little more in Joe Biden's back. So then they force him out. They plug Kamala in. And then they sent out the messaging, Libby, to the same outlets who they got against Joe Biden that you got to be pro Kamala Harris. Everybody, it's a full court press on, on pumping Kamala up. She's the greatest. She's the best. Everybody loves her. Sunshine, lollipops, rainbows. You have the, the DNC. And look, Donna Brazil gave Hillary Clinton the questions before a debate against Bernie Sanders in 2016. We all know that, or 2015, whenever it was that their debate actually happened. Who's to say that in this big uh, sit-down sit interview that Kamala Harris is going to do, they probably know all the questions ahead of time. I wouldn't be surprised. I think crazier things have happened. We know the, the editing work that goes in, as I just discussed, uh, into these things. Do you feel like, Libby, that this has all been planned and orchestrated and it feels like there's all this, everyone's in on it, Hollywood's in on it, the media's in on it, obviously the Democrats are in on it. I can't see things any other way. Yeah, it is hard now in retrospect to not think that the uh, June 27th debate was a complete setup. We yeah. were on this show talking about how it seemed like it was an audition for Joe Biden, and it sure was, as it turns out. And then, as you said, they plugged him into all of these events the following week. They ran him ragged. They just made him, you know, look even worse and worse as that time period went on until they finally replaced him. And this is something also Jack Posobiec talked about this before Biden got elected. He was saying, you know, if we get Biden in office, they're going to do a bait and switch and put Kamala in before we know it. Yeah. And here we are. And they've pretty much done it. The only thing left to see is if Biden actually leaves the White House before the election or before the, you know, if she's elected before the end of the year. Um, and I wouldn't put that past them. It does seem it does seem like a setup. And I think one thing that's true is Republicans and conservatives and probably, uh, you know, a heck ton of independents were surprised by this because we did not think that this level of maliciousness was really possible mm -hmm. in this political party. We did not think that they were going to break all of the rules that they kept touting as the most important rules that they had, like, you know, democracy, for example, or grassroots organizing, for example. I don't think we all expected to be lied to so blatantly. And it's infuriating to see it all happen, but it's also a little bit encouraging to know that um, so many Americans find this to be absolutely atrocious yeah. and an unacceptable way to run things, and that there are so many people who are not part of the Democrat Party who are saying, you know, we like rules. We like fairness. We like actual equality. We like actual opportunity. We don't appreciate being told what to do. And you've even seen Democrat activists coming out of the DNC being like, this was total trash. I can't stand up for any of this. I can't vote for Kamala Harris and I can't vote for a party that tries to get me to, you know, elect a candidate based on joy and euphoria. <laughs> Unfortunately, the media again has spun this in, in the in the way of oh Joe Biden the true American hero who's oh. down and that's that's what a lot of people are running with as well and that's what's so upsetting too because we've seen this time and time this little narrative as well and they they're running with that and and, and, and but it's exactly what you just said Libby that's the truth but the American it, people are being told it's it's in fear. <laughs> yeah no it is the the thank you Joe Chance at the DNC I was it, like the this is the most inauthentic bunch of hot garbage I've ever seen. None of these people, it, the, oh, all of it. I just, it was, again, it was hard to watch. You know, Libby, you talk about people leaving the party or, or uh, Democrat, you know, lifelong Democrats in a lot of cases being like, I don't know, this seems a little off to me. I'm going to go ahead and say one of those people is RFK Jr. And what was great to me is that, see, the Democrats, I believe, again, I'll, you'll, you, you will never convince me 
that this all wasn't planned. At this point, I've seen too much. I've seen too much as it relates to my family, my father-in-law, the whole thing. You'll never convince me it wasn't planned. And one of the people who I think can feel that and feels it the same way is RFK Jr. You know, after our convention, the Republican National Convention, the Democrats were like, you know what, here's how we're going to take the wind out of the sails for the Republicans. We're going to have Joe Biden drop out that Sunday because we had a lot of momentum. It was very positive. Sunday comes, Joe Biden's out. No one's talking about our convention anymore. They're all talking about Joe Biden, plugging Kamala in, that whole thing. Well, on Friday after the Democrats convention, RFK Jr. dropped out of not the race, but only the swing states and says that he's endorsing Donald Trump. He came out, he he gave up. I thought it was an amazing speech. And by the way, I agree with this. He says, in an honest system, I believe that I would have won the election in a system with a fairly scheduled debate, with fair primaries and with a truly independent media untainted by government propaganda in a system of nonpartisan courts and election boards everything would be different. The DNC dragged us into court, state after state, attempting to erase their work and to subvert the will of the voters who signed those petitions. He's talking about trying to get himself on the ballot because don't forget, he wanted to run as a Democrat. His entire family has been Democrats his whole life. You know, hello, this is this. When you think of the, the Kennedys, you think of Democrats, right? They wouldn't let him even run. They wouldn't even put him Libby on on the ballot in a lot of these states. He said it deployed DNC aligned uh, judges throw me, wait, the deployed DNC aligned judges threw me and other candidates off the ballot and throw through President Trump in jail. That's what they wanted to do, essentially, is what he's saying. So he came out, endorsed Donald Trump, but he went even farther because he actually, Libby, I thought his speech was fantastic. He called out the Democrats and he said, here's what's been happening to me and everyone needs to know about it. This is not the fair system that they are are trying to portray it as. This is not the system of my father, my uncle. This is not the same party and I can no longer support it. And he even acknowledges that within his own family, people are very upset that he joined forces with Donald Trump. I think that it's um, it's amazing. You look at what this could ultimately mean, Libby. He pulls around 5% Uh, uh, give or take in a lot of these swing states. He took his name off the ballot in those swing states. So I guess the idea is that probably you're going to see a surge for Donald Trump. Now, some of those people may vote for Kamala. Some of them may not vote at all, but it could be enough to actually have a very big impact on the election. I loved every second of it. And I love that it happened on Friday, day after the DNC living. We've all seen how quickly life can change. The outcome of a single event can impact our entire nation. Now more than ever, it's crucial to be prepared. Don't wait until it's too late. Protect your family with ReadyWise emergency food. With ReadyWise emergency food, you're covered, not just for the worst, but for anything life throws your way. Enjoy peace of mind knowing you have delicious, nutritious meals ready when your family needs them. ReadyWise has a huge selection of freeze-dried meals from breakfast to pasta dishes. You can be assured that your food will be good to eat when you need it with their 25-year shelf life. ReadyWise is an American company that cares about its fellow citizens, you, and is committed to your safety. Visit ReadyWise.com and use promo code TRUMP20 at checkout for 20% off any regular priced items. That's ReadyWise.com, promo code TRUMP20. All right, you've asked and MyPillow listened. They're finally bringing you the most requested offer ever. Right now, you can get the queen size premium MyPillow for only $19.98. My pillow is made with patented adjustable fill and it adjusts to your exact individual needs regardless of your sleep position. It helps keep your neck aligned and holds its shape all night long so you get the best sleep of your life. But that's not all. Get their six piece kitchen or bath towel sets for only $25. The brand new mattress topper for as low as $69.98 and their famous my pillow bed sheets for as low as $25 and so much more. Go to MyPillow.com or call 800-624-3945 and use promo code TRUMP to get huge discounts on all MyPillow products, including the premium queen size MyPillow, only $19.98. It's the lowest price ever, so don't delay. Order today and use promo code TRUMP. 
Yeah, I thought that was great. I thought that that was extremely well handled, that there was this the announcement of the surprise guest at, I think it was a Turning Point Action Rally um, in Arizona. Um, even Charlie Kirk speaking on his podcast that day said that he didn't know who the surprise guest was. Uh, you had RFK announced that he was going to be making this announcement in Phoenix. So we knew that there was a good chance of that. And I did think it was an absolutely iconic and spectacular moment when the two men met on stage. So they good. have differing views about a lot of things. They have similar views about a lot of things. And I thought it was an extremely powerful moment. And one thing that I think a lot of Trump voters have in common with um, RFK supporters is that both groups of people have a substantial distrust of the Democrat infiltrated institutions in this country from academic organizations to federal agencies to, you know, local schools, um, you know, to to so many other things, museum boards, Hollywood, all of these things. And there's a lot of distrust of those institutions, which I think is a very healthy and necessary distrust. Um, and I think that those groups of supporters can certainly align in those areas. And I had the utmost respect for RFK Jr. coming out, opposing his family, opposing so many of his friends. Right. And another thing that he said in that speech was that he knew that supporting Trump would cause difficulties for his wife, for his friends, and for his family. And it already has caused difficulties for his wife. Cheryl Hines, of course, you know, a Hollywood actress, Curb Your Enthusiasm, was uh, lambasted on social media by people who probably she thought were her friends. And that's something a lot of us can relate to. You know, that happened to a lot of people during Me Too and the, the cancel era of the past few years. So, um, and when she came out with a very heartwarming response in support of her husband, saying that we don't have to agree necessarily on politics to love each other and support each other, I also took a lot of heart from that. And I certainly hope that um, a lot of Americans do, because this is something that's come up over the years. And you even had Democrats for a long time saying, and still saying, if your spouse supports Trump, divorce them. And I don't think Cheryl Hines is going to go that route. And I think that can give a lot of people hope that perhaps we are more able to see truth and to stop being quite so divided along these uh, political lines. It's But this is how the country was designed. Right. And actually, he uh, he uh, came out, I think, on Sunday and was on one of the Sunday shows made on Fox. And he said that he talked with uh, my father-in-law multiple times and they talked about possibly forming, forming some sort of like a unity government and bringing their ideas together. And he said, look, we're still willing to criticize each other on things where we disagree, but that's how you come to a place of great ideas. You shouldn't always have to agree with one another. That's what this country was founded upon. And so Brittany, I, I loved it. I think it's great. And I think hopefully it gives people who may be independents and not sure about things a second to kind of take a step back, look at it all, and, and look at what's going on here. You have two people from completely different political backgrounds. You have a Kennedy and you have a Trump, and they are now joining forces, and they're saying, we want to do this not for ourselves, but for the good of the country. It would have been so easy for him to go over to the Democrats. Man, they would have welcomed him with open arms and they would have said, come on in, we'll coddle you, we'll make you feel good, we'll give you a puppy and a safe space, the whole thing. He didn't do that. He took the tougher route because he understands, I think, what is at stake in this country right now. The same institutions that have been weaponized against Donald Trump are, are attacking him as well. The same way that he has been kept off the ballot they attempted to do to Donald Trump any chance they possibly got. And he can very clearly see what a threat this is to the future of America. And it's not hyperbolic to say this seems like a very measured, smart individual who said the only way I see that we save this country is with Donald Trump back in the White House. And I thought it was amazing. And I just want to read really quickly one of the things that he posted. You know, people love to criticize Donald Trump. They love to criticize MAGA. I actually heard I was um, waiting to go on TV over the course of the DNC last week, and I heard the the uh, person interviewing someone on the ground there in the, the convention center, and this was a, a Democrat congressman, I forget who it was, but he alluded to make America great again as a bad thing. And he said, well, where is it that they want to go back to? When is it they want to go back to? They want to go back to the 60s before the civil rights movement? Do they want to go back to the 20s? before women could vote? When is it that they want to go back? What, what are they going back to? 
And it's very upsetting for me as obviously I'm a family member. Obviously, we know my values and for whom I am voting. But to hear people try to misconstrue what Make America Great Again is truly all about. Here's what uh, RFK Jr. says. He says, what MAGA really means. The phrase is troubled liberals who think it is a call for a return to America before civil rights, gay rights, and women's rights. But I have a more generous interpretation, one that is truer to my experience of Donald Trump as he is today. Make America Great Again recalls a nation brimming with vitality, with a can-do spirit, with hope, and a belief in itself. It was an America that was beginning to confront its darker shadows, could acknowledge the injustice in its past and present, and yet the sa at the same time could celebrate its successes. It was a nation of broad prosperity, the world's most vibrant middle class, and an idealistic belief, though not consistently applied, in freedom, justice, and democracy. It was a nation that led the world in innovation, productivity, and technology. It was the healthiest country in the world. I have talked to many Trump supporters. I have talked with his inner circle. I have talked to the man himself. This is the America that they want to restore. Thank you, RFK Jr. Brittany, that was beautifully said, and I couldn't agree more. It was absolutely beautiful, beautifully said. Um, I posted it on my social media. Oh, nice. I received some backlash as far mm -hmm. as folks telling me, um, oh, this is this, this is ridiculous that you post this. And I this is my question to all of them. What rights is President Trump going to take away from you? I support gay rights. I support women's rights. I have a daughter. I'm a mom. I'm a woman. I, I, what rights? Will President Trump take away from you? Just, just tell me. Don't you remember they when we were all in cages? You it's crazy. About that. Oh, it's when we were all in camps. We put us in camps. Who is it? Rachel Maddow keeps keeps <laughs> uh, saying that one. And this is, That's this is the problem. And, and I'm sorry, I always go back to the media, but I just having. Well, you lived it. Are you, Brittany. You, you more than anyone understand the power of exactly. the media and the way that things can be so is easily True. misrepresented and misconstrued, right? Yeah. And that's exactly what they're doing. So do you guys remember even like, so, so this will be the third time that I'm voting for Trump and I'm proud to say that. Um, but going back to the first time when I was under contract with CBS News and I'm covering the elections and covering everything, we had to go around in the newsroom and be like, oh, who are you voting for? Huh? Right. Uh -huh. You know, so afraid if you say Trump, you're going to get fired. And it's just, I mean, come on. That's the, that was the world that we were living in and still to this day. And because it, for some reason, this whole MAGA movement, make America great, exactly what you were just saying, they've turned this into a racist, oh, you're, 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 you're not for women's rights or you're not this or you're not that. And, and that's unfortunately what the battle that we're up against. And that's why the, the more people that come out and speak out and, and, and say, no, 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 I am for civil rights, I am for gay rights, I am for women's rights, but let's break this down. What exactly is President Trump going to be taking away from you? If you, man, want to marry your man, he's not going to take that away from you. So why- Knock are yourself you out. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait. I said, knock yourself out. No one cares. No, no one, one cares. cares. Just don't bring it to my, my first we, week. We want a country that is successful. We want people successful in America. We want every American to be able to realize your version of the American dream. And the difference is we were on a path to that in 2016 through 2020 with Donald Trump in the White House. We have been on a, a path towards complete and total destruction and in the complete opposite way since Joe Biden and Kamala Harris took the White House. And, and Brittany, you pointed it out. 12 of the last 16 years, Democrats have been in control of the White House. And it has gone so poorly for so many people because of them. The only four years people can actually look back on, save for the pandemic, of course, is when Donald Trump was president of the United States. The, the only thing they can do, though, is lie and misrepresent and try to pressure people into not voting for Donald Trump because you will be a whatever it is, ist, racist, misogynist, sexist, all those things. One of those people, by the way, is Brittany Mahomes. So, you know, they love a good cancellation, love to, to you know, get people in trouble. Brittany Mahomes, apparently September 4th, 24th of 2017, when all of the, if you guys remember, all of the NFL players were kneeling mm -hmm. in, in, in the most, in the grossest, most offensive way for the <laughs> national anthem. I mean, that whole thing was crazy. Donald Trump, of course, was one of the first people to say, like, 
I don't like this. And if I own one of these NFL teams, you'd be fired if you if you know you were kneeling for the national anthem. Uh, Brittany Mahomes came out. Here's what she posted. Trump, you have now offended way too many people with the little monkey like the with the this. Um, and people somebody dug it up, dug that tweet up and they're like, oh, look, Brittany Mahomes. She likes Trump. She also, Donald Trump posted, um, I guess it was like a month ago, we released our platform at the RNC. He posted the platform because you know why? It's so short. It's so easy. It's so common sense. There's no nonsense in there. It's to the point. He posted it and she liked it. So you can see her name liking it. Libby, people went nuts over this. They're trying to cancel her. And I actually want to give her credit because instead of going back and being like, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done this. She's like, she basically was like, get a life. It's yeah. kind of her response. And I loved it. I love that too. And it's, you know, it, it's also like, don't apologize. Never apologize to the mom yeah. that's hunting you down, trying to destroy no. your life. And it would be very hard to, you know, go after her. She's married to a pro, pro football player. Doesn't she hang out with Taylor Swift? They're like best friends. Like, yeah. Yeah. And Taylor Swift was reportedly going to show up at the DNC. Taylor Swift did not show up. She hasn't. A lot of her reports at the DNC. Yeah, that didn't come true. Yeah. Huh? No. And so, yeah, kudos to you, Brittany Mahomes. I don't know much about you, but I thought it was great that she stood her ground and that she didn't care what people thought. Like, good. Let's yeah. have more of that. We need we need so much more of that. You and know? it's a good platform. Like there's there's not much to not like on that platform. Right. You know, Devil's advocate. Very straightforward. Yeah, go ahead. Go because ahead, I mean kudos to her for sure. And you know, I've always said this, I wish more journalists would come out because there are there are pro-Trump journalists that are out there. It's not a lot, but there are still but you have to understand. It's our bread and butter getting paid for working for these networks. We're, we're bringing, we're putting food on the tables to our families. Yeah. And if you're getting, if you're getting threatened that if you go against the agenda and narrative and you'll be fired, what's going to happen? So sure, she she's able to to say, you know what, f you, and I and I applaud her for not backing down and backing down to the mob. But we need more people to step up. We need more people to speak out because this is getting so ridiculous. That like, I mean, literally 2021, I was canceled because I started speaking out against COVID and the vaccine and, and, wow, it, and wow. going against the narrative. I was living in Los Angeles. I moved my entire family to Florida. You're not going to make my daughter take this vaccine. There's so many things that we can get into, but it's like, if you don't speak out, then nothing's going to change. And so hopefully we continue this pattern of not backing down because it's, it's, it's disgusting. We should all have a voice. This is freedom of speech here in this country, freedom of press. Can I just add one thing too? Yeah. And when, when your father-in-law gave the interview on X with Elon Musk, you literally had reporters, you had reporters asking for this to be censored, for this not to be aired in other parts of the world. And like, isn't that an oxymoron? You're a freedom of press and you're asking. Yeah. For, I mean, so this is what we're up against and it's it, it, it doesn't make sense. And we have to continue the fight and continue speaking out in my point of view. You know, what's funny is that hearing RFK's speech uh, last week and hearing the way he, he described how he was basically kept off of all uh, all the big news networks, right? He said NBC, ABC, CBS, uh, MSNBC, CNN. I uh, He said I, I did like a handful of interviews with them, but I always was willing to go on. The only one that actually let me on was Fox and they would have him on a lot. I saw him on there all the time. Um, but I was thinking about it over the weekend and, you know, people love to criticize Donald Trump for his rhetoric or for his actions or for whatever. But he's actually in some ways, uh, I would say, Libby, probably a genius because it is the earned media that Donald Trump gets that allows him to stay on top the way he does, because they would they try to Britney's point. They desperately try to silence him. They tried to censor him on social media. They've tried to do everything to keep Donald Trump down and for you to be done with him. They want to end Donald Trump. That's it. Um, but because they can't help themselves in the media, they love to, to talk about Donald Trump. And he gives them some fuel every now and again, gives them a little, just a little taste every now and again. He's been able to do nearly the impossible. RFK Jr. couldn't even do it. Kennedy couldn't even get through the, you know, the shield that the media puts up. Donald Trump, whatever you think about him, in some ways, 
it's sort of genius because he knows what people will talk about. He knows what will get press. He understands how to play the game. And in so many ways that he has been so successful because without that mentality and without that ability, I would argue he would have found himself in the same place as RFK Jr., kept off a ticket, kept from running, kept down by the media. But because they're so obsessed with him and he understands that, he kind of plays them all the time. And I'm I'm here for that. And I, I think people need to start thinking of that as well. Maybe he's smarter than you even realize in a lot of cases. Yeah, and he's also recently taken a page from Vivek Ramaswamy's book. And I know that the two have been aligned. And he's going on all kinds of podcasts. Yes. He was on Theo Vaughn's podcast the other day. If you ask Donald Trump to show up, there's a good chance he might say yes, because he knows that every single American voter out there is worth talking to. And right. every single audience that's out there is worth, you know, standing before and listening to and, and discussing ideas with. And I think that that has been so cool. I loved when um, Vivek was doing that. Mm -hmm. And I've loved seeing Trump do that. And I think that he can just keep doing that straight through the election. And it's the kind of thing, too, where you saw him call into Greg Gutfeld the other day. You know, he'd been <laughs> talking with the previous hosts. They ran out of time. So he just called into the next show. I mean, you know, we're out here ready to hear what he's got to say. And he's like, OK, where are you? I'll come there. I'll talk yeah. to you. That sounds great. There was that great viral moment when he went to Howell, Michigan. And some reporter was like, oh, you're in a town of white supremacists. And he's like, who was here in 2021? Joe Biden. Thank oh, you. Like, we're done. That's it. That was like, a drop. Yeah, I love not, that. I love that he is just the, the stops at Dairy Queen and, you know, random hot dog places and the cheesesteak place in Philly. And he doesn't go in there and clear everybody out and bring in his own supporters. He goes in there and he says, hey, I'll buy dinner for everybody. What are you what are you doing? What's going on? And I think that that ability to really just be present with Americans is something that we don't see from the Democrat side. And the reason we don't see it is because the Democrats think they're better than the rest of us. And if there's anything Trump does, it's he talks to everybody the same. If he's, you know, if he's talking to a janitor, he's going to show that janitor just as much respect and, you know, dignity as he shows the queen. You know what I mean? So yeah. I just think that that's that's one of the, the best qualities, I think, about Trump. And it's one of the things that I think um, makes people able to listen to his ideas because he talks to you like a real person. Amen to that. Well, we're in the home stretch. We're getting down to the 60s uh, in terms of days until I think tomorrow is the election. So terrifying, but exciting all at the same time. I can't wait for it to be over. Um, and I'm, I'm, I know what I want to have happen. I'm going to work every single day for it. So Libby, thank you so much for joining us as always. Brittany, it was great to have you. We hope you'll come back. This was so much fun. Thank yes. you. Yes. Am I allowed to say ASS? Yeah. Oh, cause you are such a badass. Oh, <laughs> I just need to say, yeah, you, you are, you are as a mother, as a wife, um, daughter-in-law, everything, everything that you do as a woman, uh, from mom to mom, you're just kudos to you so Thank you're such you. a badass woman keep that's going that's so nice yeah i'll take a badass compliment all day <laughs> long thank you yes girl all right well great to have you we, i'm sure we'll have you back very soon and to everybody at home as always thank you for joining us we'll see you back here next time for more of the right view and i won't back down Nothing is worse than being on a phone call that drops. Nothing is worse than trying to text someone and you can't reach them because your phone is out of service range. And nothing is worse than supporting these major corporations and companies who don't support us. That is why I love Patriot Mobile. They are America's only Christian conservative wireless network. They use every cell tower out there available to all networks so that they have the greatest 4G and 5G coverage nationwide, and they support the causes that are important to us as conservatives. If you go today to patriotmobile.com slash Laura Trump and use the promo code Trump, you will get free activation today. Again, that is patriotmobile.com slash Laura Trump. The promo code is Trump for free activation so that you can get a great cell plan and feel good about doing it.